right? So I see uh, the number of people are increasing. So I'm just going to end the poll and you'll be surprised to know the answer for this. So 46% of the attendees have said that yes, they check the prices of currencies or commodities or stocks on daily basis. And 46% of them said once in a while, while 7% has said no. So the conclusion is most of you who are here are either already being like in touch with the markets or once in a while you keep a check on the price. You keep checking what is happening around the world. And I think uh, fair enough. You don't have to be uh, completely there. You don't have to be, uh, you know, keep checking the prices every day. But in this particular session, we'll learn, first of all, how to enhance your investment skills. And when I say enhance your skills, that means we'll, we'll go through the platform also, how to do a buy and sell, but at the same time, how to manage your risk, how to diversify. Enhancing the investment skills basically means learning the art of diversification. We have come up with a new asset class called share baskets. We'll be talking about uh, that as well. We'll also talk about um, an outlook for oil, gold, stocks, currencies, what is expected out of them. So uh, just please be there for the next one hour. And if you have any questions, you can uh, type on the window. I'm getting uh, many chats about uh, people who are not able to hear my voice. Uh, please bear up for the network connection. If you're not able to attend this session, we'll have a one-on-one -on -one training, so don't worry about it, okay? Just be there for the session. Now, beginning with the first thing, just a review of why we need to enhance our investment skills. It is an activity which should not stop every day. It's not because you're staying at home, so you, you know, you're staying at home might as well enhance your investment skills. That's a great thing. But this is something which you should keep doing this. You should not give up on this. And this is something people learn every day, something new. Okay. So what we have to understand is if there is a way that you can learn something today, tomorrow, do not stop this. Right. What has happened? This is a global pandemic, coronavirus. So we have seen a lot of things things changing, we have seen markets coming down, we have seen volatility increasing. And one thing uh, about volatility, about the markets, which we have to understand is fluctuations and volatility, th these things, they will never stop. Maybe 10 years ago, it was less, now it is more, but it will always be there, right? So we have to understand this. The volatility is the part of the markets. The fluctuations are the part of the markets, and that's what makes it riskier. And that's why it is your responsibility and it's your duty to keep sharpening your skills, to keep learning new and new things, make yourself more familiar with the platforms so that when the right time comes, you're there. Okay. Now, just to brief you, what has been happening after the pandemic hit? Uh, everybody now has, uh, I'm sure, a lot of free webinars you guys must have attended about uh, coronavirus, coronavirus pandemic, how to keep your investments safe. So many people must have reached you out. Uh, this particular session uh, stresses more on uh, practical application of how you will diversify, how to manage your risk. At the same time, we'll just go back and see uh, what has been happening. So markets have fallen down in the last few weeks, basically starting from the March. And the volatility has increased. So Dow and S&P, two US stock market indices, they have both seen huge drops due to the uncertainty around the global coronavirus pandemic. Uh, there is a gauge or there is a tool, an index, which was uh, introduced by the Chicago Board of Exchange which was called volatility index. So if you see on your right here, CBOE volatility index, volatility index is like a fear gauge. It measures the volatility which happens in S&P 500. So if you see here markets coming down, you will see the volatility index going up. It's a kind of inverse relationship, right? What is the reason of showing this to you right now? One, to make you aware about how much volatility is there in the market? 
Uh, I'm getting a lot of uh, questions right now about oil and stocks. Uh, guys, please be there. I will answer all the questions as much as I can uh, within the presentation. Now, the volatility index is something which measures the fluctuations, which measures the how much the markets are in fear right now. Okay. So if I see the US stock market index coming down, I see the volatility index going up. Now, the reason why this is something which is really interesting, you are seeing the volatility index chart. So this is a graph of the volatility index, which is the fear gorge. Okay, I'll just switch off my camera to make the connectivity better. Let me know if it helps. I've switched off my camera. So those who are not able to hear me, if it improve, improves the network, please let me know. Right now you see the volatility chart here. If and uh, nothing to see at the technical point of view, don't worry if you're not a technical analyst. This is uh, no rocket science here. What we just have to see is every time the volatility index peaks out. So I'm looking at, let me just make it less transparent. So I'm looking at here. Yeah, I'm looking here at this peak, right? Over here. And then at the end, there is one more peak. Every time you see there are different, different peaks which have been shown in this particular chart. And every time the volatility index peaks up, you see all these green lines which stand alone as towers. Every time this green line, it goes high to the peak and then comes down, you see the markets rebounding back most of the time. So I'm showing you a chart between 1996, between 1996 to 2020. Okay. Uh, and last a couple of sessions I did where um, most of you asked me that, is this a good time to invest into stocks? How do we know that markets have bottomed out? How do we know that markets will not crash again? So guys, to know the answer to this question, there is obviously no sure shot time or way when we know that, oh, markets have bottomed out, let's buy. But by looking at the volatility index, we can understand that if I am looking at, say, here, peak, and then something like here, which is peak, yeah, here, and then if I see it here, which is another peak, and then again here. So every time you see that the volatility index, it peaks out, we see S&P 500 moving back. S&P 500 is your US stock market index. Now this was 1997, 2008, if you see 2008, there was recession, the volatility was at its peak, right? 2001, there was a dot-com bubble, there was a peak. Uh, somebody asked me, so basically this is the biggest crash since 1990, since the volatility index is high. That is true. We saw 2008 crash also. So if you see, uh, there are two peaks made, right? If I clear this out, see this chart, 2008 year, if you see, you will see a higher peak and then you see 2020, which is the right corner. So there is a highest fall, which we have seen over the period of time. Obviously, 2008 crash was a result of housing market collapse. This crash is a result of a global pandemic, right? Normally, every so whenever there's a crash, there is a recovery. Tomorrow, I will have a session um, uh, where we will discuss about uh, navigating in uncertain times, where we will discuss about how the market cycle runs. So uh, in that, while I was uh, preparing a presentation, uh, we went through a couple of things and we understood that obviously there is a recovery and then there is a boom, again, acceleration, again, there is a crash and again, there is a recovery. So what we see right now is 2020 volatility index, it peaked out here and then started coming down, right? Every time this has peaked out, normally this is where you see that the markets have bottomed out. Bottomed out means when the when the market crash which happened and now it has started recovering. Please understand this. Bottoming out, it doesn't mean that now it's just going to go up. Bottoming out means it crashed once to the lowest point and after that it has went up, but the trend is still 
slightly on the downside because coronavirus vaccine still not there manufacturing still suffering lot of companies in good companies like starbucks or adidas or any other company their sales have been hit the corporate earnings are negative so it's not that the stocks are going to go up now it's just a particular bottom where the market's crashed from that bottom it went up dips downside are still expected but through volatility index we can always try at least to measure whether we are on the verge of bottoming out or not so that's why this is like a fear gauge also i will share you uh, one more uh, slide for this see this is also the volatility index chart it's just the shaded areas what you see right now this is the area when recession happened so you see the area of 2001 when dot com bubble came right it was here then 2008 which was one of the biggest crashes and then 2020 which is again it's happening so every time you see it peaks out it comes down peaks out comes down and in between if you see these small small peaks which you are seeing so every time this has peaked the markets have crashed and then when volatility index comes down markets recover recover which means bottoms out so for now this is how we have seen it that the peak of the volatility index is now coming down okay that doesn't mean that stocks will continue to go high right now the earning season is going on so lot of companies have come up with their earnings lot of companies have shown negative earnings also so there has been a, a decline in the stocks also and few stocks they have continued to go up right so it's a mixed signal going away right now and dips can also come so we will understand how to diversify how to uh, not take a very high risk okay so one of the most important skills in investment is to learn how to diversify okay also uh, when we see about the news now most of you said you're aware most of you said once in a while you read about the news so there are few months and there are few timings when you really have to uh, you can take advantage of the opportunity if i were to say it so when we talk about the opportunity like right now is the earning season right whenever every quarter in every 3 months the shares the companies they come up with the stock earnings when they come up with the stock earnings we always see that sometimes there are companies which deliver good earnings and the stock goes up sometimes the earnings are bad stock goes down but the percentage of increase and decrease during that particular time is high so if alphabet has come up with good earnings the stock might go up by 8% 10% if adidas for example has come up with bad earnings shares might come down by 7 8% now through buying and through short selling you can take advantage of both the price movements you can take advantage of the rising prices you can take advantage of the falling prices also right so uh, we are going to learn how to do this okay please keep writing your questions somebody asked me any chance of investing for oil so see investments in oil can be done in two ways uh, one you invest direct in a commodity okay um we, uh, anyways by the end of the session i was supposed to give a outlook for oil but then since we are discussing the question see oil investments right now are in a range so you can say 8 10 dollars is the highest it can go when i say 8 10 dollars which means from its current price okay if the current price is 24 or 25 you can expect a high at max 34 or 35 in the coming few months and lowest to 14 or 15 similarly 10 dollars probably high from this current price 10 dollars a range you cannot expect a very high rally because very simple thing the the demand for um because due to coronavirus has decreased there is a major demand slump and there is still a major supply glut even if there is small output cut even the inventories they start recovering there there will not be a overnight increase in the oil prices so it will take time so if you are investing in a direct commodity be ready you have seen the futures had gone negative in last last one month when what we saw oil prices actually went negative and because the storage cost was so high that the investors were not ready to take the physical delivery and everybody started dumping the contract so that's why the oil prices fell so you have to be very careful 
have a very limited exposure to oil as a direct commodity you can however invest into oil companies because uh, one year two years down the line when this demand matches up with the supply you will see the blue chip oil stocks not any oil company i'm talking about good oil companies like exxon mobil or total or schlumberger these kind of companies which are reasonably priced fairly valued they have already come down from their historic highs and over a period of year two years we'll see once the demand catches up with the supply the prices of these companies is also expected to move higher plus many of them are very good dividend yielding companies they give good dividends so i would suggest you of course you can invest in oil a uh, very less exposure in the direct commodity in the future contract normally how you invest but try to have a major exposure uh, or a increase exposure of uh, the same uh, amount in stocks stocks and companies you will see performance of even when oil was going negative companies like exxon mobil chevron they were still maintaining their price they did not crash that way so diversify into the direct commodity into the stocks right please uh, keep writing uh, your questions any questions if you have and will be uh, able to answer that right now uh, going forward we need to understand that how to be more uh, connected to the platform and how to take advantage of the rising and the falling prices so i'm going to share my screen with you okay now what you see it's a trading platform uh, the understanding of the trading platform is very necessary because when you execute any trade or even if you are a long term investor trying to go for long term investment should be skilled and should be you know should be able to understand that how many units to put if you are if you want to buy 20 ounces of gold you add extra zero it becomes 200 and it increases your risk needless to say so how we what we are going to do is we are going to understand first how to use the product library uh, it is still 5 o'clock still 30 minutes to go before the us opens uh, so we will till then go through major news and try to understand that how we read the market and how we understand it right first this particular layout which you see it's completely plain i have not added anything into it you will receive this layout for yourself you can click on split select three different windows and then you can start adding but before that you need to know the functions so first is your search option where you can search different different kinds of instruments okay whatever you want to trade whatever you want to invest into you can use it you can do it using the search option which means let's say for example I want to trade in Adidas shares. Click on Adidas, and you will see a chart with historic price movements, a buying and the selling price right here. And if you click on it, you will see an order ticket, which makes which enables you to trade or trade in adidas stocks or which enables you to punch your order for how many shares you want to buy or what is the value of your shares which you want to buy okay this is demo account so i have put 100000 dollars in this so i'll be trading i'll be investing this particular amount you can choose your amount and after the session is over guys always try to yes uh, this is a demo account and after this session is over please try to um, take demo accounts from your rms and try to uh, trade as much as you can because no better way to trade to first in a, in your demo account just to understand make yourself familiar of how it works and then obviously you can go ahead with your live accounts as well because the market prices the volatility which you will see in a demo account is real only the money is not real for obvious reasons so similarly you can search anything you want from this particular option it's a very easy user friendly platform uh, the platform is provided to you by cmc markets which is the broker with which you will be opening your trading accounts uh, cmc is based in london in australia in new zealand in different parts of the world so uh, this is the platform provided by them 
Century Financial, we provide you uh, research, we pro provide you advisory um, updates about what is happening with the markets and if there are any opportunities uh, you would like to uh, invest into. So there is a consistent amount of support which comes across through us. Now, when we move on to the platform, we can search different things. So right now I'm searching, say I search Adidas, I search Apple, so Apple shares come up. Right now the market is closed, so we can see market will open, US market will open UAE time 5.30 p.m., right? So we are looking at the buying selling prices, 297.64, 297.58. I click any of those, the order ticket is open, but right now I cannot execute the trade because prices are not moving and the market is closed. So you understand how search option works. A much more refined option, which you can see is the product library. Now, when you click on product library, you see all the asset classes which are here. Why asset classes are important? Asset classes are important because you need to diversify. Why you need to diversify? Very simple. Uh, I'll give you one small uh, example. See, when back in uh, 2008, the worst performing asset class was the global real estate. But in 2007, the best performing asset class was global real estate, which means a year ago, an asset class which was the best performing asset class, the very next year when market crash happened, global real estate was the worst performing asset class. What does it tell us? It tells us that if we are concentrated into only one asset class, then we are ourselves are opening to a or being vulnerable to a concentration risk. Concentration risk is the risk of being exposed to one asset class. So I come across many clients, many investors who tell me that, see, I, I like trading in gold. I always track gold. I always trade in Indian markets. That's my area of focus. I just want to focus into that which is okay because you have been investing into it. Maybe you are much more familiar with the risk and reward. However, that being said, it is essential to keep a separate amount into some different asset class in case if gold or Indian equities or global equities or currencies or bonds, if they are not performing in the way you expect it, because this saves your money. So the first skill which you need to be very familiar and the most important one is diversification okay and to diversify you should need you need to know how many kinds of asset classes what are the asset classes which are available sure so uh, somebody asked me that uh, if we have to diversify the investments uh, can i give the information about the it markets and the indian markets as well see a uh, lot of indian uh, shares so we are not doing indian shares but there are a lot of uh, ETFs and there is Nifty which is available here to trade in and um, uh, that being said there are a lot of stocks uh, if I were to take names companies like uh, HDFC companies like Tata Steel um, and uh, a lot more companies uh, I'll, I'll give you I'll share a couple of names with you which are expected to perform well in long term uh, companies like PVR which recently came up with the results so there are a lot of companies which are expected to perform well, but right now, obviously because of the entire pandemic, these stocks are down. So I'll share some names with you guys. If, if you want, you can write it down and uh, you know, just go through it. But again, anything I'm saying here, it's on the basis of my analysis. Uh, it does not guarantees you uh, any amount of profit. Please look at your portfolio, consider your risk, and then, if if you are okay with it, with the further analysis, you can go and check. We'll also look at the tech sector of the US as well, and we'll see how it is working out. So now, going with the asset classes, we are looking at the product library, which has commodities. Commodity market, much talked about. So when we look at the commodities market, let me just add product library here to my layout. Just excuse me.
So now when we are looking at the uh, product library, we are able to see different, different asset classes. Now we're looking at commodities, cryptos, currencies, forex indices, indices, share basket, shares, treasuries. Now these are different asset classes which are available in global markets. When we look at commodities, if you see commodities are just not oil or gold. Normally people, they trade in gold and oil. They think, okay, these are the commodities which I have to invest into. Commodities can be oil, gold. There are agriculture commodities also. So when you look at the commodities base, you will see that there is something called agriculture commodities here on the subtype. You select agriculture and you will see all the agriculture commodities which are available. Coffee, corn, lumber, oats, rice, soya bean, right? These are agro commodities which you can invest. And then there is, there is an agriculture index which is created by CMC markets itself that you can invest into individual commodities. You can also invest into an index which is tracking X amount of agriculture commodities. So it gives you a diversified exposure in itself that if you have invested only in wheat or only in sugar and tomorrow sugar prices drop, then your investments are down. But if you have invested into an agriculture index, which gives you a diversified exposure, which is investing a bit into soya bean, a bit into sugar, a bit into rice, gives you a diversified exposure, right? So you can always look at the index as well. And then if you see, then there is energy based commodity. So I'm talking about crude oil, the two kinds of crude oil Brent, which is UK, West Texas, which is US. If you see today's performance, the energy commodities have been if you scroll down, you will see gasoline, heating oil, which are also energy based commodities. There is something called energy index. An energy index gives you again a diversified exposure. It's distributed between Brent, WTI, gasoline, and probably if you need the percentage, the RMs will be able to provide you what is the percentage of diversification which is done in every index, right? So commodities are your instruments which you can always invest so when i was telling you in oil you can invest directly as a commodity i'm talking about these prices so if you see brent click here today it is 30 dollar per barrel right lowest is 29.50 so if you want to invest in oil as a commodity as a direct red commodity this is a future contract for uk oil which is brent okay if you want to do in us oil this is your future contract of us oil right now 23 dollars right so you can always uh, take exposure in direct as commodities and then another asset class which is cryptocurrencies cryptocurrencies we have heard about bitcoin litecoin ethereum monero etc now with cryptocurrencies you have to be very careful because if you have not invested in cryptos before you have to understand it's a digital currency there is no intrinsic value to a bitcoin it's not as widely accepted. So it is one of the highest speculative and riskiest assets. So please do not make this as a part of a long term portfolio. I would suggest you to be very cautious uh, when you are uh, trading or investing in Bitcoin. Moving on to currencies. Now, these are currencies which we have heard, which we have seen. Uh, Euro, pound, Canadian dollar, Australian dollar. Forex market is one of the largest, most dangerous markets in the world. Fluctuate a lot. So uh, my suggestion to you, mostly currencies and commodities should be dealt on short term basis. Try to avoid situations where somebody tells you that, you know, buy pound for two years and keep it, you're going to make a lot of money or buy euro for one year, you're going to make a lot of money because buying anything for one years or two years a very good example i'll show you uh, the description of the historic performance of pound tbp usd now here i am i maximized the chart this is just the historical performance like a line chart which you uh, which we are looking at now in last four years if you see this particular fall, 23rd June, 24th June, anybody who knows what happened on 24th June or 2016, there was a Brexit referendum, right? 
so during the brexit referendum we saw the drop in pound here see this big drop that time it was 1.49 on 21st june 2016 it dropped on the same time to 1.32 from 1.49 to 1.32 major drop if you see even the decline from here to this particular price see almost 12 and a half percent on the same day but if you had bought gpp at this price thinking oh referendum is happening after 2 3 years i'm going to make a lot of money if you bought here in the next 4 years pound it came down it reached here and then came down came down reached here came down here but it never went back to 1.49 from where it fell so what i'm trying to tell you is currencies and commodities the movement is driven by central bank policies brexit trade wars tsunamis pandemics everything okay so don't think that i'm going to invest long term in euro is going to bounce up or is going to go up or come down the currency trends can stay down or up for a long period of time euro for example same reason okay so currencies and commodities are best short term traded instruments you want to go long term you can invest into shares uh, funds like exchange traded funds related to different different instruments share baskets and a lot of things right now coming back to the asset classes so there are currencies and then you can go back and you can see forex indices now how i explain you energy index or agriculture index that gives you diversified exposure similarly a forex index category has been created which gives you an exposure to a currency whose performance is measured against all its peers so if you are looking at a usd index the performance of dollar is measured against say canadian dollar chinese yuan euro yen all its major peers and then the value of dollar is moving higher or lower so against rather than comparing dollar against only one currency it is compared against five six currencies and then the performance of usd index goes up and down depending on the combined performance not just on the basis of one so forex indices gives you again a diversified exposure then comes your stock index so many of you who see uh, if you know about uh, nifty and sensex in india uh, similarly they have s&p 500 and dow jones in us so a stock index here I'll just increase this so if you see here so basically you can actually diversify very well with the stock market index if you scroll down you will see here instruments like so in like us 30 for example please remember this the number which you see here 100 30 100 2500 the number by the end of the index it denotes how many companies are being tracked under this index so if i say us 30 that means 30 companies of us are being tracked under this index 30 companies and which are those you can always search for the components on the web and they will show you 30 companies like apple boeing microsoft jp morgan morgan stanley caterpillar coca cola walmart all big companies right so this is us 30 similarly when you see s&p 500 so 500 us companies one country can have more than one stock market index and you can actually buy and sell the index itself not just only the share but the index itself so if apple is listed in nasdaq s&p and us 30 so you can invest into apple as an individual share or you can buy index which is tracking apple and a lot more other stocks so you get a diversified exposure when you reset this you will see that instead of index also there is something called share baskets now share baskets is something which was not there before and share market baskets have actually been uh, introduced now so what we have understood is uh, obviously Uh, most of the investors they would like to uh, see also that if we need to diversify and if it is not the index what about if we want to diversify sector wise so share baskets basically uh, when we look into the product library we will see here now see share baskets look at the sectors so these are basically the collection of shares 
from the same industry sector you collect most of these shares from the same industry you group into them group them into a single basket and now you have the opportunity to gain exposure to a larger slice of an industry so if you are trading snp uh, snp might have companies which are related to video streaming or not related to video streaming or maybe there are only two companies which are related to video streaming but if you go to a streaming basket here right so you can actually invest into specific companies which are related to video streaming say AT&T or Netflix or Walt Disney etc and you don't have to have those shares you don't have to buy those shares separately you can just buy this basket and those shares are included in it in different terms of so these are theme based baskets based on technology lifestyle entertainment renewables banking cyber security cyber solutions one thing advantage first so we were talking about enhancing your skills so first thing is to save your cost that's the most basic skill so it is cost effective by investing into baskets and diversifying what you do is you save a lot of your cost because by investing into a basket you don't have to individually buy those shares you are buying one basket so your cost becomes really effective uh, your exposure is much more enhanced earlier you would buy netflix or walt disney as separate stocks but by putting it into a basket your exposure increased right and then again uh, any sector which is trending let's say um if if you're thinking that most of the transaction in the world happens in cash 70% of them happens on cash maybe mobile payment sector or mobile payment basket could be something which you can invest into right so sector wise you can look into these kind of so more information will be provided to you if i mean you have uh, any kind of questions which is related to how much weightage is given to each share or how much does it cost to buy one if they have do so attractive what are other cost involved into your rms will be available and if you have any uh, questions you can ask as well and we'll be able to answer you also so share baskets is also something and then normally it is your shares now shares which we know which you can use to you can buy for example facebook uh, boston scientific jp morgan all different kinds of companies so i'm looking at subtype look if you select on subtype and say okay i want to see uh, shares which are related to pharmaceuticals right and then you click on us so you will see all us pharma companies most of the us pharma companies which are available for trade you can look into it you can always buy sell invest and all these companies are available so you can see the lowest you can see the highest you can see the percentage change once the market opens in 15 minutes you will see these prices moving and you will see a percentage change also right so mostly these are your asset classes now if you see for those who think that uh, you know this market was always forex market or forex market is very risky forex trading is it is not only forex forex is just currency pairs but when you look at market as a whole you will see that there are commodities their uh, agriculture their commodities which are related to energy their commodities which are related to uh industrial metals precious metals right so gold is a precious metal commodity silver is a precious metal commodity copper is an industrial metal commodity right now once you know the asset classes one thing which you should do and this is really going to uh, give you a, a very good idea and a very good picture the best way to enhance investment skill is to be aware first and to be aware you need to create a watch list so when you click here create new watch list here give it a name you want let's say i will give demo webinar i press enter now i can add different different things to my watch list prepare a watch list for yourself of the things you are going to trade or you want to like look at apple shares you click apple it will come you want to keep a check on adidas yes 
right? You want to add, you want to keep a check on US 30, which is your US stock market index. Click on US 30. You want to also keep a check on S&P 500. S&P 5. You want to, we read about volatility index. So even volatility index is also avail available for trading. Select volatility index. See right now it is 33. Add currency, for example, Euro USD. It is here, right? Then you add, say, uh, crude oil. Rent, July contract. Then let's say you all do gold. So I'm adding different different asset classes. Now this is wheat right here, which is a uh, agro based asset class. Okay. So different different things. I will also add say here, which is a pharma company, Europe. Right. All these shares you can add. All these asset classes also. So the gold index, commodities, currencies, everything. Best way. You can see the lowest, highest for the day, open, closes, percentage, increases, decreases. I tell you, if you do this for five or six days, for the seventh day, you yourself will have an idea that, okay, this is my range. It has been trading within this range. Now, if it breaks it higher, then which means a buying trend has started. If it has gone down a support level, so, okay. Somebody is asking as a new entrant into trading, what would be the best amount one would look at? Uh, investing diversely, given the fact we are in the midst of a pandemic. See, it, it's legal. Uh, many of you must be asking right now, how, how much is the amount I should invest? See, if you're speculating, if you're day trading, day trading should never be done with your 100% investment. Day trading should be a part of your total investment portfolio. So there is something called uh, uh, rebalancing the portfolio. So re rebalancing means Sometimes people invest into stocks and bonds in a proportion, 60% bonds, 40% stocks, 70% bonds, 30% stocks. Sometimes you are investing into uh, asset classes, which is 100% into stocks. Whatever money you are investing, one, you have to make sure that it does not affect your household tomorrow if the market comes down and you've invested and you have to hold your trades. Is that the money which you need after one week or two weeks or in the next two months? So do not invest the entire money into it. See what how much it is in spare and how much you want to invest into equities because that will be decided as per your income levels and as per your expenditure. Okay, so uh, this is something which again, if uh, if your relationship manager sits with you, understands uh, how much you are you expect. What is your investment objective? If you're a speculator, you want to trade more, you want to take higher chances, then the size of your investment will be different. Otherwise, if you want to buy stocks, hold on to it, the size of investment should be different. So it depends a lot on you, uh, especially, frankly speaking. But we are more than happy to sit with you and understand and plan this out for you in terms of how much money can be invested into stocks, how much can be used for day trades, or if nothing can be used for day trades, put into stocks and funds. Uh, taking one more question here. How do I get into this demo account, uh, which you're seeing at the moment? So start paper trading to practice and this is a website or in software so the platform is in the form of a website and app as well uh, iphones ipad uh, any other android phones you have the app is available uh, please talk to your uh, associated relationship managers they can provide you a demo account they can provide you the demo details okay uh, and, and this this what are you looking right now is a web link and it belongs to CMC markets, but the link of that is on Century's website also. Please talk to your RM. He or she will help you out in providing you not only just the demo, but they can also assist you. You can have a one-on-one -on -one session with me anytime after this, and we can personally go through the platform. Each one of you, anybody who's interested, just talk to your RMs and try to have a one-on-one -on -one session, right? So now I have created a watch list right here. And I can see these instruments. Okay. So for more four or five days, guys, at least create a watch list and just keep checking prices. If you're seeing right now, US 30 or say Adidas, it is 198. Okay. Now I have been seeing from last three days, Adidas comes to 194, goes back to 198, comes to 193, to 198. Now see today's low and high. Today's 
So I can wait until you will sit it down in the middle of the day around 2.30 or 3.30. Have a look. Then US opens at 5.30. Have a look. US closes around 12. If you sleep around 10.30, just have a look. Three to four times in a day and you're good to go. You don't have to constantly monitor what is happening unless you're really interested into it. Uh, somebody asked me, do you think it's the right time to enter oil tracker? Uh, where's the market consensus? See, uh, there are oil ETFs which are available, tracker ETFs also, in the on the likes of United States Oil Fund and everything. Uh, every time is the right time because there are a lot of investors who try to time the market. You cannot... So you cannot guess the timing that, okay, now it has bottomed out, let's enter. Nobody will be able to do that. Not me, not you, no one. The best part to uh, do this, find out the tracker which you want to invest into. Uh, let's consider United States Oil Fund, for example, USO, or IPATH, Goldman Sachs uh, Oil ETF, or ProShares ETF, any, anything. Do not invest your entire amount. If you were to invest $20,000, put 5,000 now. If there's a dip, say 8-10%, 5,000 again. Again 8-10%, 5,000. This is called dollar cost averaging. I will talk about this tomorrow also in one of my sessions, which is tomorrow. And uh, we'll try to understand how dollar cost averaging works. Very simple. I'll show you a chart of Microsoft and uh, that, that will give you also an understanding. So once you've created your watch list, now you can execute the trade. So we'll understand and first, how to execute the trade and how to uh, keep a check on your positions. So I have seen my product library. Now to add this, I will just add this layout on my watch list. Demo webinar right here. I can see uh, seven, eight minutes, the US markets will open and we can see US stocks also trading live then. Now, most important thing, before diversification, uh, before anything else, you need to understand also the risk part of it. These Platforms are leveraged. Leverage means they provide leverage-based trading. If you put $20,000, you can trade more than $20,000. That's why you need to be very, very careful that you do not increase your risk. Managing your risk and reward is the most important thing which you should do. I'll give you one example. So let's take example of uh, US 30. US 30 is a US stock market index. Or instead of that, much talked about, let's talk, let's look at Brent crude oil, right? Now, this is crude oil Brent. This is dollar per barrel direct commodity. I'm talking about oil as a direct commodity. I have $100,000 with me, which I can see in my account value, okay? If I write 1,000 barrels, it is equal to $30,000. 1,000 multiplied by the buy price. If I write... 10,000 barrels, it is equal to $300,000. I have 100,000. So what I'll do is I'll write 100,000 in my amount. So the barrels for me is automatically calculated. 3,300. Let's keep it. 3,000 barrels is equal to $90,000. Now, in these kind of platforms, when you put a trade, even if you have the sufficient amount of money, you don't have to block the entire trade value from your total equity. What does it mean? It means this is your total equity, $100,000, the money which you invested. This is the value of your trade. How much? $90,000. So technically out of 100,000, 90, you should pay and you get 3000 barrels of oil, right? But when you go to the product overview here, you will be able to see that oil has a margin percentage of 1%. What does it mean? It means that if you want to buy $90,000 worth oil, you don't have to take 90,000 from your 100K, just have to block 1% 1 of 90,000. 1% of 90,000 is here, 907. Out of your 100,000, $900 or $907 will be blocked. Rest is your available balance. See what happens when I click here on buy. I bought 3,000 barrels of oil live right now. Buying price is 30.31, okay? And how do I see my trades? I add account positions. This is my positions. If I maximize this, you'll be able to see 
oil brent 3000 barrels 90000 dollar worth oil but for that as you can see i have not blocked complete 90000 i have just blocked the margin which is 900 dollars it is exactly like how you buy a house if you have a million dollar in your account and you are buying a house worth a million dollars you don't have to block 1 million to buy that house okay you can buy it by giving a down payment and rest you can get on mortgage so the idea is to use debt to increase the efficiency of your capital okay but there has to be a level to which you can do this you cannot keep increasing increasing otherwise it becomes dangerous somebody asked me how long we can hold on to this oil this is a very very important question guys how long you can hold this oil every oil is traded in future contracts and now people should know more about future contracts because uh, the may future contract of wti us oil went negative and it was on its expiry day after which the contract will be rolled over to a new contract which was at 22 dollars so this create a big panic among investors because people never knew about how future contracts work oil is traded on exchange in future contracts future contracts means if i buy crude oil brand july and i go to product overview i can see that there is a expiry date of that contract which says 28th may till 28th may you can hold on to this trade but if on 28th may 10:30 pm you have not booked the profit or loss on this contract then automatically your trade will be closed closed means if you are on the buying side it will be sold your profit loss whatever it is it will be booked and a new trade will, will be opened again in the august contract which will be the next trading contract right okay somebody asked me if i can but i can if i want to buy for 90000 or it's must that i use a margin uh so you need to use the margin if you are using this trading this platform so again a very important question i blocked a margin to take this trade uh we cannot opt to use margin trading see but i understand uh, why you are asking that you don't want to use the margin or you just want to pay the full amount because of the risk concern because what happens it gives us in commodity trading what does except delivery means i will i will tell you this also so in a platform when you buy 90000 dollar worth oil and you are just blocking 1% rest is your available balance now many of you must be concerned that if you want to buy oil worth a million dollar you will still block 1% and you can buy but the point is it increases your risk so for those people who are conservative who don't want to take leverage just do it this way that whatever money you have put i have put 100000 dollars you can buy oil worth 90 in this case obviously if oil goes to zero only then you will receive any margin calls i am not saying that oil cannot go to zero i think we all have understood that if it comes to that point oil can go negative also but the most safest way to trade in a margin trading platform is uh, don't take leverage you block margin but you don't have to take leverage leverage means you put 100000 dollars you trade oil worth 200000 but if you have put 100000 and you are trading worth 90 or 80000 dollar worth oil below your deposit amount then it is taken to be as very minimum risk or on a conservative side so you let's have a one on one chat talk to your rms and we can get much into detail that how to be on a conservative side of it right for now to keep it on layman what we understand is what we understand is that if you want to buy 100000 dollar worth oil not necessary that you need to block complete 100000 you can block a percentage of that trade value from your total equity so uh, but that means you're using leverage so do i have an option of choosing how much leverage i want to use so mr rajesh in this case you cannot uh, choose your leverage leverage in oil for example is 100 times 1% margin is blocked 100 times more you can buy so you are right when we are using margins we are using the leverage facility but the most conservative way as i said to do this is that if you have 100000 dollars or if you have 20000 dollars take oil worth 10000 dollars keep it very less so you will still block the margin but the risk factor is majorly reduced now 
as compared to a portfolio where you put twenty thousand dollars and take oil worth two hundred thousand. Okay, please contact us. We can uh, always sit and explain you how to keep the bare minimum in this and how to keep the leverage to the complete lowest. Technically speaking, if you have put ten thousand dollars and you are buying oil worth five thousand dollars, you are not taking a leverage because this is the money which you already have. Out of that, you are using, but you don't have to. The mechanism is that you are not blocking the complete money. So margin still exist, but leverage you are not taking it. So let's let's have a talk and we'll further understand this. Uh, in commodity trading, what does the term accept delivery means? So uh, accepting the delivery means. in a exchange market when a buyers enter into a future contract with a seller there is a the commitment that by the end of the expiry of this contract if i have not closed out my trade before the expiry and if the expiry happens and i my trade is still open then this contract gets expired and i will accept the delivery the physical delivery of the barrels of oil so if i entered into a contract with a seller on exchange that This contract expires on twenty eighth May, which means on twenty eighth May, if this contract expires, and I am in a commitment to buy one thousand barrels of oil, I will have to take physical delivery of one thousand barrels of oil, and I have to keep it in my warehouse, store it. That is exactly how accepting delivery works. But in platforms like this, the OTC platforms, the ones which we are using, there is no need to take the physical delivery. If your trade is open and contract gets expired. your profit or loss is booked and the trade is rolled over to a new contract to a fresh contract so there is absolutely no physical delivery which you will have to take or you will get absolutely no physical delivery if you see now what is happening to the oil see account value 100270 which means if you are making a profit here your account value increases right you bought 3000 barrels at 30.31 if oil goes up by 1 dollar you make 3000 if oil goes down by 2 dollars you lose 6000 okay if you have any profits here your account value will show an increase if you have any losses there then account value show a decline now it is 530 us market has also opened so you will see in your product library again shares us and let me select let's say pharmaceuticals or healthcare for example any 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 sector you can select so you see the percentage change today the low high and then the volatility also in the market so you can always select the stock sector wise and uh, up, up to your requirement that whichever sector you want to now one thing what we have done we have bought oil most important thing if you are trading in a commodity or a currency commodities gold oil copper agro based commodities please make sure your day trades always have a stop loss this is one skill which you need to know about risk management how does risk management work risk management means that if i have 100000 dollars in my account okay so there is something called the 1% rule 1% rule says you should not lose more than 1% of your total account value on day basis so if i put 100000 dollars and i restrict my loss to 1000 dollars every day it will take 100 days of continuous losses for me to lose my entire money right so you understand how 1% rule except if you see 1% here my account value is 100000 right i restrict myself that i will not lose more than 1000 dollars how can i restrict myself by putting here a stop loss now when i click here and i select a stop loss i can actually mention the amount at best which i am willing to lose 1000 dollars and obviously if i am risking 1000 let's say i want to make a profit of 1500 a risk reward ratio modify this now whether you are looking at the screen or not you already have a stop loss and take profit price whichever hits first if your 1000 dollar loss comes first it will get hit automatically if your take profit comes first it will get hit okay please understand the risk and reward bit of it you are risking 1000 dollars to make a profit of 
sometimes clients they hold on to their losses for too long but the moment they see a small profit they jump on to it and they book the profit it's not the right way to compute your risk and reward okay basically the risk reward ratio is 2 is to 1 which means if you are risking 50 dollars should expect a profit of 100 so this is how you manage it because if you are doing more trades every day and let's say there are 20 trading days you put total 80 trades even if 60% of them are wrong you if you are booking a profit twice than your loss you will see an average on an average that you have earned a net profit because every time you book a profit it is two times higher than every time you book a loss so in that case the average works out for you so always this maintain a healthy risk and reward ratio don't put 50 as your uh, stop loss but 500 as your take profit put realistic goals 50 as your stop loss 100 as your take profit right even quantity should be managed in the same way now what i understood here i understood how to execute the trade how to manage my risk by putting a stop loss and take profit right let's understand another bit which is called dollar cost averaging right which somebody was asking me about a uh, right time to invest into oil tracker so let's consider for any market let's consider so this is microsoft stock okay now microsoft right now is at 183 but if i go back and see or let's focus this now if you see this for a very long time if i have to say Okay, develop a channel somewhere around this price and this price, right? I you see, I have formed a channel here from seventeen June to October twenty nineteen. June, July, August, September. For five months, Microsoft was within this channel, right? Unless until it broke this and went up. okay so this is something which we were looking at okay range wise it's here now if it is already at 180 now if you ask me is it a right time to invest in microsoft see stocks have bottomed out at some point of time we will see stocks rallying higher if we wait and if it goes up then we lose the opportunity right so what we do we do dollar cost averaging if i have 20000 dollars to invest what and if i enter now what i will do first let's say i buy it here right 183 if it comes down by 10% which will be say around 161 here we'll buy it here another 5000 right if it comes down by another 1% which is next to the channel which was formed somewhat here this price 140 i buy another trench so if i had 15000 20000 i would divide this entire amount to small small tranches of 5000 5000 5000 this is called dollar cost averaging because if i bought it here and then bought it here and then bought it here automatically my average price becomes something like this so tomorrow if market recovers and goes market recovers and goes to my break even i will already be in a profit dollar cost averaging please understand this dollar cost averaging does not guarantees you a profit but this for those investors who try to time the market that right now i get so many i talk to so many people and i always get this thing right now markets are going down right now it's not the right time to invest the right time to invest in any market is today the only thing is how you are going to do it in the most effective manner if you have to invest $20000 and you invest all 20000 in microsoft today it's not the right thing to do yes stock has gone up but once it comes down 10% dip buy another 10% dip buy another 10% dip buy and i'm talking about the blue chip companies it's not about every stock but the companies which are good microsoft is a cash rich company apple for example alphabet for example or amazon for example you have to use dollar cost averaging looking at a very long term perspective the most important skill also is to have slightly long term perspective when it comes to your investments okay don't only think about short term and when i say long term doesn't mean 20 years that 15 20 years rule is not applicable anymore because volatility has increased so much 
you don't know what's going to happen in the next 10 15 years right so when i say long term consider at least one and a half or two years max and keep reviewing your investments uh but isn't average directly against your earlier principle of 1% loss risk management absolutely so somebody asked me that when we are doing this then why so i just showed you how to put a stop loss in your day trades right you should not lose more than 1% of your equity so uh, somebody is pointing this out that uh, what i'm saying is it contradict what i said absolutely so when i'm talking about the 1% of the risk management i'm talking about this for day traders day traders who are investing into or trading into commodities currencies uh, indices right because they trade every day so their trade should not and for those people who are taking a very high leverage that's why i told you your total portfolio should be divided smaller into day trades more into equities and the remaining portion can be into strategies okay so sometimes what investors do you put $20000 you buy shares worth $20000 they don't put a stop loss why they don't put a stop loss because the perspective is long term so if you have put $20000 and you have bought shares worth 5000 right in that case if you don't put a stop loss and if the stock goes to zero your loss is $5000 you're not losing the complete amount equity of yours 1% rule is for day traders who are trading on everyday basis so for them the point is that if you are trading into commodities currencies indices day on day basis right because day traders they take a higher leverage they take more leverage and if the price goes down they continue to hold their trade right that should not happen 1% risk management is something what is written in the book you as an investor you can decide for yourself if you see microsoft as a company and you want to invest into microsoft a couple of more stocks for let's say one year and you can keep investing small small portions just like sips uh, in india you must have seen the systematic investment plans where you keep investing small small amount every month right this is exactly how it works so for stocks the approach should be different for day trades approach should, should be different it cannot be similar for both if you are having a long term portfolio perspective you could use dollar cost averaging but you cannot do dollar cost averaging in gold or oil that is going to eat you up completely because these are commodities and currencies you cannot do dollar cost averaging in euro or pound because these are short term trading instruments you cannot keep buying euro every decline otherwise it will take you 3 4 years and you will always be on the buying side but it will not recover what we have seen in the past but stocks and companies if the results are good they recover see what happened with microsoft here if you see during the virus it came down here 140 right the same channel here and then it bounced back again to 180 right now this is the current price okay so if you buy here and if it comes down you buy again here so you do a smaller tranche do not leverage yourself if you have 100000 you start with 20 and then another 20 and then another 20 so this will give you five chances to buy microsoft after which you can expect so this is applicable to companies again blue chip companies okay so now here i can see the trades which i have taken if you see right now this is my position my stop loss got hit and 1000 see my account value is 99000 right now why because i kept a stop loss at 1000 my stop loss is hit my trade is out you can always go to history and always check here see stop loss oil hit 1000 dollars my loss book so when you are doing a stop loss and a take profit when you are managing your risk well you will not have to stress about it you can divide this into different now i'm going to show you how you can diversify into different asset classes very quick so apple shares is open okay so i'm going to take one stock i have 100000 dollars i'm not even talking about taking a very high leverage let's trade within 100000 okay so i'm going to classify i'm going to allocate this 100000 into five different stocks and before i do that let me very quickly tell you how short selling works short selling is when you try to take advantage of the falling prices a key ingredient to diversification is you don't only keep buying everything there is a way that you can take advantage of falling 
stock prices also or falling oil prices or gold prices or currency prices how short selling works very easy just understand let's say this is gold okay right now gold this is a dollar per ounce so you're looking at 1696 dollar for one ounce one ounce is 31 grams this is how it is traded in gold now let's say i'm expecting gold will come down today from 1695 to 1685 see there is a lowest l mentioned 1685 i want to take advantage of the falling prices but how do i take advantage of the falling prices i know how to take advantage of the rising prices i buy it goes up i book a profit but how i take advantage of the falling prices exactly in the same way a bit different if the price is up you sell if it comes down you buy so how you sell something which you don't own it you borrow it from your bookers inventory just do this transaction in your head just try to imagine this that there is gold 1 ounce of gold is equal to 1695 dollars right which we can see right now you did some research analysis and you are expecting gold prices from 1695 to come down to 1685 you want to take advantage of this what do you do you come to me and you say yukesh i want to borrow 1 ounce of gold from you i said okay now do this transaction then in your head as i speak i lent you 1 ounce of gold you borrow 1 ounce of gold from me and go to a market to gold souk and you sell that 1 ounce of gold there when you sell it anything you sell you receive money right similarly when you sell that 1 ounce of gold which you borrowed from me you received 1695 dollars right which is your selling price right Idiot! You took that sixteen ninety five dollars and you waited at your place. You waited for one month, two months, three months. After three months, you saw gold prices came down to sixteen eighty five, ten dollars down. You went back to that market, right? You sold that gold last time for sixteen ninety five, but now the price is sixteen eighty five. So you take out that sixteen ninety five dollars where you sold. Out of that, you buy it back for sixteen eighty five. you are left with 10 dollars right you keep the 10 dollars with you you come back you give that ounce of gold with to me which you borrowed from exactly how the principle will work here this is gold i select sell now when i am writing say 10 ounce is equal to 16000 dollars 10 multiplied by the buying price i am borrowing this from my broker's inventory and i am selling it live in the market now see i sold it for every one of those who are thinking how can i sell something which i don't have it i am borrowing it from my broker's inventory selling it live in the market now when i'm selling it at 1695 if it comes down i will buy it at a cheaper price and gold will go to my broker the price difference will come to me so what we understood is that the short selling helps us to take advantage of the falling prices does it guarantees profit no you should or do you should you always short sell no but you have to see find out the opportunity when you can short sell if the prices are too high there is a way that you can take advantage of the falling oil falling prices also whether it is oil or gold or commodities now very quick i'm going to take example of short selling and i will diversify at the same time just have a look at it meanwhile if you guys have any questions please ask and i will answer those will quickly wrap up with a uh, current uh, outlook also the broker will lend me the gold for free or there is a cost involved so short selling does not involve any cost okay but if you uh, take a trade and if you hold it overnight there is a holding cost or a finance cost which is charged that will be uh, provided to you in the schedule of charges uh, whenever you want to know about it but short selling there is no extra charge of short selling if you short sell today and close it before the end of the day uh, there is no extra charge to it if you are trading in future contracts there is no overnight cost but there is expiry date to the gold contract so there are different ways to do it okay now quickly we'll do one transaction here let me close this and book that small profit now i have 99000 100000 consider now i'm going to divide this money into five different asset classes i'm going to buy some i'm going to short sell some okay let me just quickly do this let's say apple 20000 dollars 
I'm dividing 100,000 into five asset classes. So $20,000 here. Let's say I'm buying Apple. Bought. Uh, US 30, which is an index. Let's say I will short sell $20,000 worth US 30, expecting US 30 to go down, for instance. I sell it. Then I go to Euro USD. Let's say I short sell here Euro USD. I'm expecting Euro to go down. Again, no research or analysis done. I'm just giving you a random example. Then I go to oil. So, oil, for example, here, let's say we'll buy oil. Four. And then, last but not the least, let's take wheat, an agro commodity. So, let's say I will buy $20,000 worth wheat. Okay. Now, this is again $100,000 segregated into five different asset classes. Wheat is not related to US 30. US 30 is not related to oil. Oil is not related to Apple. Apple is not related to Euro, right? The only slight relation which we see is between US 30 and Apple because Apple is tracked under US 30 index, one of the major weightages. But we have short sell one, we have bought another. So again, distributed, right? So if you want to diversify, again, when I have done these trades, there is no research done and support. There's no extra research done on this. I just quickly bought and sold, bought and sold, right? The ones which are short sell, expected to come down. The ones which are buy, expected to go up. But what I wanted to show you was, even when you are not doing research, you're just diversifying it, right? Out of these five asset classes, two of them are in profit. Three of them are in loss, two of them are in profit. Imagine doing this every day in different asset classes with research and support of the advisory understanding the entry exit points and then putting this. So diversification is a skill. Why? Because now here you're not only just going for a buying side, you're also going for a short selling side, right? So this actually is helping you out to understand that if market is falling down, you can take advantage of that. Okay. So that's why diversification is one of the most important tool which you need to understand. Now, um, Guys, about the weekly or about the current outlook, uh, so we have seen a lot of movement in a lot of instruments. Okay. Sorry. Just one second. Yeah. We have seen a lot of movement happening in different, different instruments. So uh, a, a brief outlook of what is expected in different, different asset classes. See, uh, first and foremost, to talk about gold, still expecting a bullish nature in gold we are expecting gold to go higher uh, short term long term both long term expectation is two thousand dollar per ounce more than that perhaps reason being one uh, gold is uh, extremely reacting to the interest rates which are kept on the lower part due to coronavirus pandemic and it is going to be same for a while so most of the central banks which we have seen they have been cutting interest rates we have also seen most of the gold etfs going higher and record highs okay so i think there is a way that we can uh, invest into gold for people who want to invest into gold you can use gold as a commodity you can invest there and gold mining stocks like barrick gold plus there are etfs exchange traded funds which work just like mutual funds and it gives you a diversified exposure so you can also invest into gold mining etfs so there are two to three ways individual shares commodity and the funds and your advisors can assist you that how much you can allocate and how much you can put money into this right guys one more thing which you need to know about gold is see what we have also seen is dollar the gdp data which came from us is not that great so the failing economic news also kind of affects if the economic news of us unemployment claims are higher the unemployment rate is higher if that is not right then that will also the uncertainty of the covid 19 this is all pushing collectively gold prices higher now uh, the global investment demand for gold uh, has also increased by 80 percent year on year in the first quarter this particular year the gold-backed uh, ETFs, the funds which are backed by gold, 
a lot of inflows were seen in this uh, more than 298 tons which is in the first quarter which is increase of 300% year on year so going forward i think um, investing in gold can be uh, one of the most important things so the trend for gold is expected to be on the higher side right now uh, another thing we are looking at um, oil as i said in the beginning see there is a range bound movement in oil right now even if the output cuts happen or inventory starts balancing it's not going to happen very soon you can expect if it goes up max to max 10 dollars up from here or five dollars up from here but mostly on the downside of it because demand and supply will take some time to meet the expectations right so better than oil as a commodity i would suggest you uh, try to find out oil companies blue chip companies which exist okay today if you see in the platform companies like uh, exxon mobil for example see exxon mobil is one of the companies which is uh, related to oil here see today it is 44 okay but if you see in last few days i'm just going to take a very small uh, movement see uh, last 27 feb 29 feb uh, take here 22nd april 22nd april to 5th may lowest 42 highest 47 lowest 42 highest 46 and now again it is 44 comes around 42 could be a decent buying price right but please assess your risk first and then go for uh, these kind of things but again it's an oil company so you can take exposure in the direct commodity you can also take exposure in the oil stock as well and the trackers as well okay but please keep your risk uh, profiling done whatever money you're investing you have to make sure that everybody has an individual risk appetite so you have to clarify for yourself that how much money you want to invest where you want to invest and what are the risks involved right and then uh, we are looking at stocks so uh, stocks shares uh, people most of the stocks most of the shares uh, some of them have gone up Alphabet, for example, earnings were bad, but they did not cancel the stock buyback program. So we saw Google shares going up, Adidas shares coming down after earnings, uh, Walt Disney shares coming down after earnings, right? But uh, most of the shares, so many shares have gone up also. Uh, stocks like Roku, which are video streaming related to video streaming. Now you can see your share baskets also uh, being active here. If you go to library, you see share baskets see your share baskets are also now active so if you see today china tech up by 1.4 percent big tech up by 0.97 percent somebody was asking me about the tech sector right so among tech sector the companies like microsoft alphabet amazon the sector which is more concerned with uh, cloud services uh, web hosting services these kind of companies can do well okay uh, cyber crime solutions they can do well if you see here cyber security up by one percent here driverless cars which is down european banks european automobiles right then you see mobile payments you see gaming stocks you see a streaming sector look at the streaming sector it's up by 1.2 percent streaming sector is your sector which is uh, basically concerned with the stocks like netflix disney right the video streaming services so you can always diversify into that also that being said stocks can still give a dip so if you are waiting for that dip it might come going ahead if the us china tensions goes worse and if us decides to put a tariff again on china then stocks will retreat okay so this is the time to use dollar cost averaging on good stocks don't invest your entire money on that but at least try to enter into the first tranche and if it comes down then you enter for a second and when i say comes down not by a dollar or so let's say if there is a pullback of 5% or 6% then you go for it right a correction is by 20% a pullback is by 5% so there's a difference uh, also why we are expecting a decline a, a dip in stocks because the service sector of us has been majorly impacted uh, of all the major sections so service sector accounts for 70 to 80% of the revenue and if service sector is down it will affect major corporate earnings also okay and corporate earnings are still not discounted the negative corporate corporate earnings which are coming 
they have not been discounted in the market yet so there is still a dip which is expected so be careful do not invest all at once but do invest a small portion and wait for the market dip so that you can take the opportunity again um, going forward with the currencies pound is still expected to remain down as compared to dollar dollar as i said us china tensions are rising and if there's a tariff coming in again we'll see dollar uh, getting stronger so uh, the currencies which are pound or yen against dollar that will still be on the weaker side uh, euro as a currency has been underperforming for a while now and uh, if there is a point where market starts going higher preferably us markets will go high first as compared to europe right so this is the particular expectation which we have for today for the market outlook again as i said uh, over a medium period of time medium to long term we are expecting there will be gold which will uh, possibly go high uh, for stocks short term movement is still on the higher side but dips are expected so use dollar cost averaging for good share, good shares shares like exxon mobil shares like microsoft shares like apple for example or any other company see rebalance your portfolio between growth and defensive shares growth shares which moves high but the dividends are almost nothing uh, defensive shares whose dividends are higher but the volatility is less try to find the balance between this our guys can help you out right so that being said please uh, leave your reviews uh, um, on um, century financial you can go to google type century financial if you like the seminar you can review it you can put your comments over there uh, follow us on twitter youtube please talk to your rms if you want to have a one on one session with this particular platform at any point of time um, after iftar also we are conducting one on one sessions in the evening later evenings also so whatever time is comfortable to you just talk to your rms and they will uh, provide you a time slot i am also conducting uh, investor education week next week okay in that it's a very very basic education session where we will talk about first the asset class how they move what is the average price movement what are the news which it affects uh, fundamental analysis technical analysis and it will be a day on day so that investor education week will go throughout the day so starting monday to friday it will end on friday but every monday tuesday wednesday thursday friday so we'll for the entire week for at least one and a half hours we will sit and we'll try to what i have finished in one hour or one and a half hours we'll try to finish this we'll try to use this for every day so we'll focus specially on asset classes how a product moves what is the movement and everything so if you want sign up for the investor education week as well uh, there is no charge to it uh, given the like this is ramadan it's the month of giving so best we can do is uh, share knowledge with you all um, also if you have any questions which are left unanswered uh, please let me know uh, talk to your rms they will conduct one on one sessions for you i will be available there and all this support is available to you whether you are a client or not this is available to you uh, right thank you once again for being a part of this those who were not able to attend or if they had a technical issue they were not able to listen to me uh, please we can always have this one on one i'll see if this recording will be put on youtube or not if it does then you can check it on youtube otherwise um, we can always have a one on one session as well uh, before i leave on behalf of uh, century financial my team and myself would like to uh, thank every one of you uh, anyone who's into healthcare industry uh, first responders nurses midwives doctors or if you have relatives daughters sons wives husbands who are doing this thank you so much for doing this um, you guys have risked your lives your relatives have risked your risked the lives uh, their lives outside um, for the betterment of the city and i think they are the real heroes you guys are the real heroes uh, stay home stay safe and stay invested uh, use these platforms if you have any issues we are there around the clock to assist you uh, right so uh, once again take care uh, be in good health ramadan kareem to all of you if you want to have any sessions uh, later evenings as well please talk to your rm